Hi, my name is Michael Roroff, and this is Life of Worship, uh, going beyond the music and diving into who God is and, uh, and our life in relation to Him as we surrender our lives completely to Him. And I've been going through a series about who our God is, and uh, who He is is not ever changing. He is always the same. And so when we know Him as something, it will always be that way. And there is nothing in this world that can make that different. Um, a lie can come in and tell you that he changed, but it, it'd be a lie. Because what he says in his word is absolute truth. And who God is, is the absolute truth. And it will, he will never change. He will never, ever change. And so it's really good to grasp that, especially as we come to understand him as this next name that I'm going into today, which is Abba, which means Father. The name Abba in the Aramaic uh, name uh, is young children. It is something that young children and adult sons and daughters would use when they would call their fathers. And it conveys a warm, intimate sense. And with Christians, it emphasizes a, the personal relationship as well. And so it's a warm, intimate feeling with a very personal, very close relationship. Almighty God is called our Abba numerous times throughout the New Testament. In the Old Testament, you can see how the table is being set for Jesus to come. And since Jesus is God's Son, and we are made children of God through Jesus' sacrifice, the great reveal of the New Testament is that God is our Father. Throughout the Bible, God reveals himself as healer, provider, protector, almighty, and, and even shepherd, showing how much he cares for his people. Then Jesus came. Jesus, the Son of God, his sacrifice gave us access not only to the presence of God, but his blood gave us a blood transfusion, changing our spiritual DNA forever. Jesus made us family. We are God's children through and through and not in title only. But all the benefits of the kingdom are ours. We were unable to call God Father until Jesus' sacrifice. Because what Jesus did is he became uh, our righteousness. And then so because he is our righteousness, now we are able to be the sons and the daughters of God. Amazing. 2 Corinthians 6, 18, it says, And I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord. This is the Lord speaking to his people. In 1 John 3, 1, it talks about the honor bestowed upon us, that we would be called the children of God. What an amazing honor. Not just a created. How often does somebody make a, look, look at this table, would this table ever be able to call its creator Father? No. And yet we are the created ones of God. Will a cat ever be able to call God Father? No. And so what an honor that he has given to us as his people that we can call him Father. Romans eight fifteen through 16 says, For we have not received a spirit of slavery, leading to fear again. But you have received a spirit of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself, the Holy Spirit himself, testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And the closer you come to God, the closer you come to understand uh, the Holy Spirit and have a deeper relationship, you have those moments where you know, wow, God is my Father because He loves us and, and, and how He loves us and how He disciplines us for our good and how He just gives us all these good gifts that, that only a father would richly bestow upon his children. So we are no longer slaves. And Jesus started the Lord's Prayer with our Father in heaven. Jesus knew the intimacy and had closeness with Abba. And the side note is, is this, uh, I'm just, just a quick side note is, so we know Jesus suffered more than just physical pain on the cross. Jesus' words on the cross were, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? 
That was by far the lowest moment with all the beatings and all the scars. At least he had his father. With the crown of thorns, at least he had his father. The nails being driven through and his disciples leaving, at least he had his father. But then in that moment on the cross, he was separated from his father. I don't think any of us can understand the loneliness. I don't think any of us can understand the turmoil. The deep, deep pain, the intense screaming pain that Jesus felt in that moment when he cried out, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Jesus knew intimacy with the Father, and to lose that intimacy, to lose that intimacy, it's excruciating. Absolutely excruciating. And to say it was the lowest moment of his life, um, yeah, I just heard somebody say a while ago that, um, that you hit rock bottom, and then once you've hit rock bottom, you soon find out that rock bottom has a basement. And that's a joke, but at the same time, Jesus was at rock bottom, and he found that rock bottom had a basement. And so he was going through an intense amount of pain, separation from his father, and why? What was the goal? What was the goal? It was so that you and me can say that God is our Abba. Isn't that amazing? So Jesus stated the Lord's Prayer, and he started it with our Father in heaven. He was already including and saying, God is your Father. He is not just my Father, Jesus said, but he is your Father too. And so when we pray, we say, our Father in heaven. So if Jesus willingly went to the cross, knowing he would experience separation from his Father, how much he loves us, how much he must love us to give up intimacy for that moment in time so we could call God our Abba too. And through our faith in Jesus, we are all sons of God. Through our faith. In Galatians 3.26, it says that. And because we are sons, Galatians 4, 6 through 7 says we have the Holy Spirit in our hearts. We can cry out, Abba, Father, and we are no longer slaves, but heirs of God through Christ. So, Abba, what does this mean to our lives? Well, first, in my mind, it means that we have a figure. We have somebody to look up to. Um, we have an example, a perfect example to pattern our lives after. We're always looking. I remember I played basketball, and I've used basketball analogies in the past, um, but I always liked watching Michael Jordan when I grew up. And so he always stuck his tongue out. And so when I started playing basketball, I would be sticking my tongue out. And you'd see a lot of people doing it because they're like, well, if you got to be the best, you got to do everything that they're doing. And so even though it made me not even close to being as good as him, it kind of makes you feel like you're doing a little bit better job at it, you know, if you can copy at least a little something here or there. And so we have the greatest example to look up to in Jesus who said that if you, see, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. And so we know what the Father is doing. We know what Father God is doing. We know what our Abba is doing by just looking at Jesus and the way he lived his life. And so that perfect example to pattern our lives after, all we have to do is look at Jesus. And we are seeing the Father. And so we have to look at him. So that's, what, that's the first thing that comes to my mind when uh, what this means in our lives. The other thing is, is we have an inheritance, an inheritance that doesn't fade, an inheritance that doesn't go away, it doesn't perish. It's stored up in heaven for us where moth and rust and it can't destroy it. Nobody can come and steal it because it's locked tight in the, in the strength and the power of our Father. That inheritance that we have, that internal, eternal inheritance. We, and we also have a new identity. This is the other thing that it means for our lives is we have a new identity. We have his name we, and his power and receive humbly when we follow his lead. When we follow his lead, we will see mountains moved. We will see the sick healed. And we will see the dead raised because of this identity that we have. It is not who we are. It is not based on our own will or our own ambition. But it is based on us crying out to Abba. And then he in turn leads us. 
And we will see these things happen. We already are. I'm already seeing these things happen. And so we just know that what God is doing, um, I want to pattern my life after that. I have inherited his spirit. I have inherited um, that, that great kingdom that is to come and that kingdom that is even advancing right now in his people and those who believe. And my identity is no longer that I am Mike Aroroff, um, but my identity is that I am a child of God. And we have everything that we need to live victorious lives. Everything that we need. And so we need to go to that source. And that's why the Bible says to cry out to Abba Father. We cry out because sometimes it feels like we're losing, if I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes it does. But that is not the mentality of a child of God. And so when we get in that mentality that, oh no, I'm losing and, and I can't do this, that's where we cry out, Abba, Father. And then he comes and he gives us the strength. And it is not by might nor by power, but by his spirit that we're able to do these things. And so we are able to live victorious lives. Even in our weakness, right? Even in our weakness, he is strong. And he, and, and then the last thing, the last point that I want to make is what the name Abba and who God is as our Father, what this means to our lives, is that we rule and we reign with Him. Awesome. Jesus lost intimacy with His Father on the cross just for that moment so we could draw near to God, who is now our Abba. Amazing. And what is our response to this honor? Complete obedience. <laughs> I know, I know, I know you're saying, well, Micah, um, you had me till you said that complete obedience word. But honestly, when we know the love of the Lord, when we know his love and know him as a father, it is our joy to obey him. And a good father not only wants to see his children be successful, but to have good character as well. I have, I have some friends, um, they're very well off, but what their father did was their father could have given them everything and just let them live their lives. But their father just gave them enough, but not too much, so that they aren't so that they um, they had to go through life themselves and build up their own wealth. Because if their father would have just given them everything, then they would not have had the character to spend that money wisely. But because he gave them just enough to help them, but not everything, and they had to pay off some of their own college debt, and they had to do some of that other stuff, because they had to do that, they learned the value of a dollar. And now he is raising up kids, or he has raised up kids who have character and who know what to do with a dollar and are rich not because of their father, but because they pattern their lives after their father and their father gave them an open door to grow in character for themselves. And so because they have that character, they're not going to squander that wealth. Because they have that character, they're going to know what to do with their money. And so we, we can have all the power and we can have all the fame, but it really means nothing without character. To have a good work ethic, to be self-controlled, and to have a full faith and trust in our Abba. Because if he just gave us everything, where would there be faith? Where would there be room for faith? Or what would we have to trust him for? We wouldn't have to trust him for anything or we wouldn't have to have any faith because it would just be right there. He is wanting to build that character in each and every one of us. And so if prayers go unanswered to our Abba, what is the reaction of our heart? If God leads us to do something difficult, difficult, can we trust him enough to do it? Jesus obeyed and he trusted even to the cross. And all the disciples, except for John, and then Judas, Judas betrayed Jesus, but all the disciples except for John, their obedience cost them their lives. They're all martyred in one way or another. Not all of us are called to die for our Father like the disciples were. But if he does, are we ready? And I want us to have the same heart as Nathan Hale, Nathan Hale was a young teacher in Connecticut in 1776, and he served as a spy 
for the Americans against the British. Um, and the British army, they wound up capturing him and quickly executed him without a military trial or a court martial because they were trying to prove a point. But before Nathan Hale was hanged by the British, his final words were this, I only regret I have but one life to give to my country. A life lived or a life given for our Abba Father has no regrets. It has only honor. And so if we say that we are ready, but we're not willing to lay down our lives, ask the Holy Spirit to give you strength. Because He is our Abba. He is our Father. And He is worthy of all of our praise. He's worthy of our adoration. He is worthy of everything that we have, including our very lives. And so can we be like Nathan Hale, where we have no regrets? Our only regret may be that, well, I only have one life. I wish I could have two lives, because then I would lay them both down for my, for my Heavenly Father. And so if we can adopt that same attitude, and just saying, God, I will love you, I will follow you, I will obey you, no matter what the cost, this world will be flipped upside down. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I mean, look at what Nathan Hale did, saying that it inspired people to keep fighting and to keep pressing in, and America has done amazing things in the last couple hundred years. The kingdom of God, if we keep fighting, if we keep pressing in, who, is, who, who of us are going to stand up and say, God, you are my father. And if I had two lives, I would give them both to you, but I have one life, and so here, I give it to you whatever the cost, whatever it takes. A life lived or a life given to our Abba Father, like I said before, it has no regrets. It only has honor. When we cry out to him, he answers us. And he gives us the strength that we need to do what we need to do. Because he is a good father. And so I just want to close this time, like because I know that was a little heavy right there, but I also know that he is good and so he is working all things out for the good of those who believe in him. And so even if it's a hard trial, even if it's a struggle, even if it means that you're given your life, it will be worked out because our Abba Father has an eternal perspective. And he sees past this little blip of time that we have. He sees past it and he sees an eternal weight of glory. And that is exciting. And so my prayer is as we look to our Abba Father that we are able to have that perspective. Have that perspective. 